Alrighty, Holy Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for the honor of reading and learning your word. Teach us your decrees. Holy Father, please pour your holy rain of the Holy Spirit over us abundantly. Please give us holy joy to dreams and visions and holy heaven classes and visits. Thank you, Holy Father, for giving us a deep prophetical insight into your word and to use it in our daily uh, activities and daily news, Holy Father. You give us the news, Holy Father. We don't want to listen to the mainstream media because you are our news, Holy Father. We decree it. In Jesus' holy name, amen. In the fifth month of the same year, the fourth year early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azar, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Holy Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, This is what the Holy Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon within two years. I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Holy Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet, Hananiah, before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Holy Lord, he said, Amen, may the Holy Lord do so. May the Holy Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Holy Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who predicted you and me, who preceded you and me, prophesied war, disaster, plague against many countries and great kingdoms but the prophet who prophesied peace will be recognized as the one truly sent by the holy lord only if his prediction comes true when the prophet hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet of jeremiah and broke it and he said before all the people this is what the holy lord says in the same way i will break the yoke of nebuchadnezzar king of babylon off the neck of all the nations within two years at this time the prophet jeremiah went on his way Shortly after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put, on, put an iron yoke on the necks of all those nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him, and I will even give him control over the wild animals. When the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust lies. Therefore, this is what the Holy Lord says, I am about to remove from you the, uh, off the face of the earth. This very year you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Holy Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah the prophet died. This is a text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests and the prophets and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was af after King Jehoiakim and his queen mother, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elas Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Gamaria. Son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, it said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses, settle down, plant gardens, and eat what they, what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, there do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Holy Lord for it because if it prospers you too will prosper yes this is what the holy lord almighty the god of israel says do not let the prophets and the diviners among you deceive you do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have they are prophesying lies to you in my name i have not sent them declares the lord this is what the lord says when 70 years are completed for babylon i will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future then then you will call upon me and come then you will call upon me and come and pray and i will listen to you you will seek me and find me you will seek me with all your heart i will be i will be found by you declares the holy lord and i will bring you back from the captivity i will gather you I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Holy Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. You may say the Lord has raised okay. you may say the Lord has raised up prophets for us, for us in Babylon, but this is what the Lord says. 
about the king who sits on David's throne and all the people who remain in this city, your countrymen who did not go with you into exile. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I will send the sword, famine, and plague against them, and I will make them like four fig trees that are so bad they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with the sword, famine, and plague, and make them abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth, an object of cursing and horror, of scorn and reproach among all the nations where I drive them. For, for they have not listened to my words, declares the Lord, words that I sent to them again and again by my servants and prophets. You exiles have not listened either, declares the Lord. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about Ahab, son of Koliah, and Zedekiah, son of Messiah. Okay, hold on. You who who are prophesying lies to you in my name, I will hand them over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will put them to death before your very eyes. Because of them, all the exiles of Judah who are in Babylon will use this curse. The Lord treats you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon burned in the fire. For they have done outrageous things in Israel. They have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives, and in my name have spoken lies, which I did not tell them to do. I know it, and I am a witness to it, declares the Holy Lord. Tell Shemimai the Nehelamite, this is what the Lord Almighty, the Holy God of Israel, says. You sent letters in your own name to all the people in Jerusalem, to Zephaniah, son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the others. And you said to Zephaniah, The Lord has appointed you priests in place of Jehoiada to be in charge of the house of the Lord. And you put any madman, you should put any madman at, who acts like a prophet into the stocks and neck iron. So why have you reprimanded Jeremiah from Anathoth, who, put, who poses as a prophet among you. He has sent this message to us in Babylon. It will be a long time. Therefore, build houses and settle down, plant gardens, and eat what they produce. Zephaniah the priest, however, read the letter to, Jer to Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Send this message to all the exiles. This is what the Lord says about Shemaiah the Nehelamite. Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, even though I did not send him and has led you to believe a lie, this is what the Lord says, I will surely punish Shemaiah the Nehelamite and, the descendant, and his descendants. He will have no one left among his people, nor, nor, will he see the good things I, nor will he see the good things I will do for my people, declares the Holy Lord, because he has preached rebellion against me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Be careful. 1 Timothy 1, 1 through 20, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of our Holy God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, our hope. To, to Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from our Holy God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus, so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrines any, any longer, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. These promote com controversies rather than our Holy God's work, which is by faith, the goal is this command, is to love, which, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Some have wandered away from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law of God, we know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels and ungodly and sinful, the unholy and ir irreligious, and for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for adulterers and perverts, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whoever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that confirms, conforms to the glorious gospel of the blessed holy God, which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus, our Holy Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a vile man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Holy Lord <clears throat> was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ, might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only holy God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies. Once 
nade about you, so that by following them you may fight the good fight, holding on to the faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and so have shipwrecked the faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Handed over to Satan is like the hand of God's protection comes off and they go through some hardships until they repent and find the holy place of God, the shelter of the Most High. But that's in obedience. Psalm 86, 1 through 17, a prayer of David. Hear, O holy Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my holy God, save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O holy Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O holy Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O holy Lord, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear, hear my prayer, O holy Lord, listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O holy Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O holy Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are our holy God. Teach us your ways, O holy Lord, and we will walk in your truth. Give us an undivided heart, that we may fear your name. I will praise you, Holy Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. Amen. Hallelujah. The arrogant are attacking me, O Holy God, a band of ruthless men. Seek my life, men without regard for you. But you, O Holy Lord, are compassionate and a gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Holy Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Holy Father. Proverbs twenty five seventeen. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you and he will hate you. Thank you, Holy Father, for your word. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Father God, pour your Holy Spirit over us abundantly. Give us joy to dreams and visions, Holy Father. We ask you for holy heaven classes. Clean us, Holy Father. <clears throat> Forgive us our sins from us all the way back to the first man, Adam, for all our ancestors. Forgive the sins of the United States of America, Holy Father. Put it all under the blood of Jesus, our Holy Savior, Messiah. And vindicate us and recompense us sevenfold for whoever has stolen from us and our country. I pray through the holy authority and blood of Jesus, our Holy Savior, Messiah. Amen. Jeremiah 30 through 31, Holy Father, thank you for the honor of studying and reading your word, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father God. Cast us not away from your presence, Holy Father, pour your Holy Spirit over each of us abundantly. Pour the holy blood of Jesus, the Holy Savior, and Messiah over us. Clean us, Holy Father, forgive us all our sins, in Jesus' holy name. Jeremiah 30, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Holy Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people, Israel, and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess, says the Holy Lord. These are the words the Holy Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard, terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. None will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob. But he will be saved out of it. And that day, declares the Holy Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off the necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Holy Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, and do not be dismayed, O Israel, declares the Holy Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Holy Lord, though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you. I will completely I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you entirely let you go entirely unpunished. This is what the Lord says. Your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your cause, no remedy for your sore, no healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would and punished you as would the cruel. Because if your guilt is so great and your sins so many, why do you cry out over and over your wound, your pain that is that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. But all who devour you will be devoured. All the enemies 
All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. All who make spoil of you will, I will despoil. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Holy Lord. Because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. This is what the Holy Lord says. I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them will come the songs of thanksgiving and the songs of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor and they will not be disdained. Their children will be as in the days of old and their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their leaders, Their leader will be one of their own. Their own ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near, and he will come close to me. For who he is, who will devote himself to be close to me. Amen, declares the Holy Lord. Let's devote ourselves for that. Amen. So you will be my people, and I will be your holy God. See, the storm of the Holy Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. A fierce anger of the Holy Lord will not turn back until he foolish, fully accomplishes fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart in days to come and you will understand this at that time declares the lord i will be the holy god of the clans of israel and they will be my people this is what the holy lord says the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert i will come to give rest to israel the holy lord appeared to us in the past saying i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with loving kindness i will build you up again and you will be, be rebuilt of virgin israel again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joy with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when the when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion to the Holy Lord our God. This is what the Lord says: Sing with joy, O Jacob! Shout for the shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your make your praises heard and say. O Holy Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside the streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Holy Lord, O nations. Proclaim it in the distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Holy Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the land of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord. The grain, the new wine, and the oil, the young of the flocks and herds. They will be like a well-watered garden and they will sorrow no more. Their maidens will dance and be glad, young men and old men as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Holy Lord. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Rama, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because her children are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be, reward, be rewarded, says the Holy Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy so that so there is hope for your future, declares the Holy Lord. Your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's moaning. You, you disciplined me in your unruly calf, like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my holy God. And I, after I strayed, I repented, and after I came to understand, I beat my breast. I was ashamed and humiliated, because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim my dear son, the, ch the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion for him, declares the Holy Lord. Amen. Set up road signs, put up the guideposts, take note of the highways, the road that you take. Return, O virgin Israel, return to your towns. How long will you wander, O faithful or unfaithful daughter? The Lord will create a new thing on earth. A woman will surround a man. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use the words, The Lord bless you, O righteous dwelling, O sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all the towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. Oh, he had a, a prophetic dream. I urged them. First of all, that requests, 
prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleasing that our holy God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of truth. For there is one holy God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. The testimony given in its proper time and for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying and a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. I want. I also want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship our holy God. A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was a woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved through childbearing if, if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Amen. Praise you, Holy Father. Psalm 87, 1 through 7. Of the sons of Korah, a psalm of song. He has set his foundation on the holy mountain. The holy Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said to you, O city of our holy God, Selah. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too and Tyre among Cush, and will say, the one, This one was born to Zion. Indeed, Zion, it will be said, Of Zion it will be said, This one and that one were born in her. And the Most High Himself will establish her. The Holy Lord will write <clears throat> in the register of the peoples, This one was born in Zion. Selah. As they make music, they will sing. All my fountains are in you. Proverbs 25, 18, 19. Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is a man who gives false testimony against his neighbor. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is reliance on an unfaithful, unfaithful in times of trouble. Oh boy, I know that. Very rarely I found anyone faithful. Holy Father, we thank you for teaching us our decrees. Pour your Holy Spirit over us. Give us joy to dreams and visions. Holy Father, per please forgive us our sins. Us all the way back to the first man, Adam. Forgive our country for all its bloody sins. Holy Father, put them under the holy blood of Jesus, the Holy Savior, Messiah. Create in us a clean heart. Renew your right spirit within us. Holy Father, recompense us and vindicate us sevenfold to everything that's been stolen from us. And our country, I pray through the holy authority and blood of Jesus, our holy Savior, and Messiah. Give us holy heaven classes and holy heaven visits, I pray. Thank you, Holy Father. Jeremiah 31 through 32. Thank you, Holy Father, for the honor of reading your holy word. Give us discernment. It's a card, discernment, Holy Father. Clean our spirit, souls, and bodies, Holy Father, through the holy authority and blood of Jesus, our holy Savior, Messiah. Amen. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and, and of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disasters. I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Holy Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for his own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, his own teeth will be set on edge. The time is coming, declares the Holy Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, and it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a, a husband to them, declares the Holy Lord. This is a covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Holy Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Amen. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying know the lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the holy lord amen for i will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sin no more this is what the lord says he who appoints the sun to shine by day who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar the lord almighty is his name only if these decrees vanish from my sight declares the holy lord will descendants of israel ever cease to be a nation before me this is what the lord says only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject at all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when this city will be rebuilt for me from the tower of Henanel to the corner gate. The measuring line will be stretched out from there straight to the hill of Garib and then turn to Goa. The whole valley 
where dead bodies and ashes are thrown in all the terraces out of Kidron Valley. On the east, as far as the corner of the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted and or demolished. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. The army of the king of Babylon was then besieging Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of, the, of Judah. Now Zedekiah, king of Judah, had imprisoned him there, saying, Why do you prophesy as you do? You say, This is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will capture it. Zedekiah, king of Judah, will not escape out of the hands of the Babylonians, but will certainly be handed over to the king of Babylon, and will speak with him face to face and see him with his own eyes. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, where he will remain until I deal with him, declares the Holy Lord. If you fight against Babylon, you will not succeed. Jeremiah said, The word of the Holy Lord came to Hamamel, son of Shalom, your uncle, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field at Anathoth, because as nearest relative it is your right and duty to buy it. Then, just as I the, just as I, the Lord had said, my cousin Hamamel came to me in the courtyard of the garden and said, Buy, me, buy my field of ha at Hananoth in the territory of Benjamin, since it is your right to redeem it and possess it, buy it for yourself. I knew that this was the word of the Holy Lord, so I bought the field of Adonath for my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him seventeen shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed and it with, and had it witnessed and weighed out the silver on the scales. I took the deed of purchase, the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions as well as the un unsealed copy, and I gave this deed to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Mahasiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, Hanamel and of the witnesses who had signed the deed, and of all the Jews sitting in the courtyard of the guard. In their presence I gave Baruch these instructions. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Take these documents, both the sealed and unsealed copies of the deed and purchase of purchase, and put them in a clay jar so that so they last a long time. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. After I have given the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, I pray to the Holy Lord, Ah, sovereign, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show the, you show love, you show love to thousands, but bring the punishment for the father's sins into the laps of their children after them. O great and powerful God, whose name is the Lord Almighty, great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. You open, you open the eyes of the ways of men and reward everyone according to his conduct and as his deeds deserve. You perform miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt and have continued them to this day both in Israel and among all mankind and have gained the renown that is still yours. You brought your, your people Israel out of Egypt with signs and wonders by a mighty hand and outstretched arm and with great terror. You gave them this land. You had sworn to give their forefathers a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and took possession of it, but they did not obey your, or follow your law. They did not do what you had commanded them to do, so you brought all this disaster upon them. See how the sage ramps are built up to take the city because of the sword famine and plague. The city will be handed over to the Babylonians who are attacking it. What you said has happened as you now see, and though the city will be handed over to the Babylonians, you, O sovereign Lord, Say to me, buy the field and sil with silver, and have the transaction witness. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind, is anything too hard for me? Therefore, this is what the Holy Lord says, <clears throat> I am about to hand this city over to the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> king of Babylon, who <coughs> will capture it. The Babylonians who are attacking this city will come in and set it on fire they will burn it down along with the houses where the people provoked me to anger by burning incense on the roofs to Baal and by pouring out drink offerings to other gods the people of Israel and Judah have done nothing but evil in my sight from their youth indeed people of Israel have done nothing but provoke me <coughs> with what their hands have made declares the Holy Lord from the day it was built until now. The city has so aroused my anger and wrath that I must remove it from my sight. The people of Israel and Judah have provoked me by all the evil they have done. They, their kings and officials, their priests and prophets, the men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem. 
They turned their backs to me and not their faces. Though I taught them again and again, they would not listen or respond to discipline. They set up their abominable, they set up their abominable idols in the house and the house that bears my name and defiled it. They built they built high places for Baal in the valley of Ben Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Moloch, though I never commanded, nor did I nor did it enter my mind that they should do such a detestable thing to and so make Judah sin. You are saying about this city by the sword, famine and plague it will be handed over to the king of Babylon, but this is what the Holy Lord God of Israel says I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them. In my furious anger and great wrath, I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me for their own good and the good of their children after them. I will make an, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I, and I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says, As I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all the prosperity I promised them. Once more, fields will be, fields will be bought in this land, of which you say it is des a desolate waste, without man or animals, for it has been handed over to the Babylonians. Field will be bought for silver, and these will be signed, sealed, and witnessed in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, in the towns of Judah, and in the towns of the hill country of the western foothills and of the Negev, because I will restore their fortunes, declares the Holy Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Timothy, First Timothy 3, 1 through 16. I'm going to turn my light on because I cannot see very well. Thank you, Holy Father. Here is a trustworthy saying. If anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable to each other, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome but a lover of money, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He, he must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as a devil. He must also have the reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Deacons likewise are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest game. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must they must first be tested, and then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives are to be women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers. Boy, last church I went into was a very malicious pastor's wife. Oh my gosh, she is vicious, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be the husband of one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing you these instructions so that I am delayed. If I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in our holy God's house, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of truth. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Holy Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, and believed on in the world, was taken up to glory. Wow, that is awesome. Woohoo! That would make an awesome song. Okay, Psalm 88, 1 through 18. A song, a psalm of the sons of Korah for the director of music, according to Mahalath Leonath, a masculine of Heman the Ezraite. Oh, holy Lord, the God who saves me, day and night I cry out before you. My, may my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of trouble, and my life draws near the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like a man without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your, from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit and the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily upon me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves, Selah. 
You have taken me from my closest friends and, ha and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, O Holy Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do these who are dead rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in destruction? Are your workers known in the place of darkness? Are your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, O Holy Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, O Holy Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I have been afflicted and close to death. I have suffered your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have, you have taken my companions and loved ones from me. The darkness is my closest friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow, does that sound familiar? Praise you, Holy Father. Proverbs 25, 20 through 22. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing so, this will heap burning coals on his head, and the Holy Lord will reward you. Thank you, Holy Father. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Father God, teach us your decrees. Pour your Holy Spirit over us. Give us joy to dreams and visions, Father Clean our hearts, body, souls, and spirits. Cover us in the holy blood of Jesus. Forgive us our sins all the way back to the first man, Adam. Holy Father, forgive our country for all her sins, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Vindicate us and recompense us sevenfold to everybody that has stolen from us in our country, the United States of America. We pray through the holy authority and blood of Jesus, our holy Savior, Messiah. Amen.